Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and in things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, first of all, we, we should know that God has exalted Christ. Amen. This is something we are very confident of. You know, and th this is not something that's hidden. We can see this. God, God has exalted Christ. So, so how can we see this? What are some evidences of Christ being exalted? Well, God has given him a name which is above every name. And God did not suffer his Holy One to see corruption, but he has raised him from the dead. Amen. Jesus has passed into the heavens, and he has been made higher than the heavens. He ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Amen. He is far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Amen. Christ is at the right hand of God. Amen. And God has made Christ to sit down till, till God makes his enemies his footstool. And he is seated with the Father in his throne. And God is going to make every knee bow to him. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He has been given a kingdom. And the government has been placed on his shoulder. And all power in heaven and in earth has been given to Christ. And God has determined to judge the world by Christ. And all things have been put under Christ's feet, and he has been given to be the head of all things. See, these are some things we can just look at and we can say, Christ is exalted. You see, you see the government on his shoulders and you say, well, he must be exalted. See, these are things that, these are things that you just don't see in any other man. So how, how did the government get on Christ's shoulder? How, how is he the head of all things? It, how did he become so exalted? Uh, did, did man just decide that, you know, this Jesus is a pretty good guy? Let's, make, let's, make, let's put the government on his shoulders and let's all bow before him. And let's all submit to him. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 22. This is Peter preaching at Pentecost. He says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Amen. See, man did not exalt Christ. God did. Man, man crucified Christ. Man, even after seeing all the signs and the wonders, and even after... God approved Christ in front of them with these signs and wonders. They, they, they just tried to get rid of Christ. See, man, man is not the one who has done this work. And see, but God has raised him up. It says, is, you've taken him and by wicked hands have crucified, whom God hath raised up. And see, the zeal of the Lord of hosts has performed this. Acts 5.30, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted to be a prince and a savior, 
to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. See, the, the work that man did was to try and get rid of Christ. God is the one who has exalted him. Amen. So, so no man can take credit for exalting Christ. This was the work of God. Amen. Now, God is not a man, neither the son of man. And it, it follows that his method of exalting people is, is going to be different than man's method. So when God wanted to save man, he saved them to the uttermost. And when God wanted to bless Abraham with seed, he, he gave him as much seed as the sands on the sea and as the stars in the universe. And, and in Isaiah 49, God said to Jesus, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Judah and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation to the end of the earth. Yeah. See, God, does not do th God doesn't do things half-heartedly. See, he's saving men... Not, he's not just saving them. He's saving them to the uttermost. Amen. And, and he's blessed Abraham with, he didn't just give him a couple. He said, you know, I'll give you a couple children. No, as many as the sands of the seashore. Amen. <clears throat> and, and he says, it's a light thing. He says to Jesus, it's a light thing for you to, for you to raise up the Israel. And you know, I'll give you the Gentiles also. He's, he's given Christ more than just that. So God doesn't do things half-heartedly. So if, if he's going to exalt someone, he's going to exalt them much more than any man would exalt them. But our text says that God has highly exalted Jesus. See, now, now it's even to a higher level. He's not just exalted Jesus. If God exalted Jesus, that would be a big thing. We'd all notice. But see, now God has highly exalted him. Now, when God exalted Solomon, he said, I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. See, there, there was no one like Solomon after God had exalted him. And God has given a Christ a name that is above every name. See, there, there's no one like the exalted Christ. Since, since God has lifted him up and there is no one like him. So men, men can really only exalt someone so far. And you can't exalt someone to be higher than you are. See, I couldn't make somebody a king because I don't have the power or the authority to do that. Now, Egypt was a very powerful nation, and Pharaoh was a very powerful king. In Genesis 41:40, this was after Joseph had interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh said to him, Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. See, Pharaoh was only able to exalt him to be over the land of Egypt. See, that, that's, that's all he could do for, for Joseph. But God has put all things under Jesus' feet. See, God is able to do this. God's able to subdue all things under him. See, this is, this is much more than any man could do. This is beyond the power of man. So Esther chapter 6 verse 10 um, Mordecai the Jew had saved the life of the king, and a and couple years later, the king couldn't sleep, so they brought the chronicles to him, and they read, and, and they read that Mordecai had saved his life, and he said, 
what's been done to honor him? And they said, nothing. So then Haman, Mordecai's enemy, came in and the king said, what, shall, what should be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? And, and he said, well, take, take your crown and the, the clothes that you used to wear and put them on your horse and lead them through the city and have the princes proclaim before him his praise. And verse 10, then the king said to Haman, make haste. And take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done to, to, unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house, mourning and having his head covered. See, this, this king made Mordecai's enemy go through the streets proclaiming his praise. Now, God, God also is a king. He said, he said, I am a great king, and he is also the king of glory. And he's making every tongue, even the tongues of Christ's enemies, to, to confess that he is Lord. See, God is making the enemies of Christ even to go before Christ and proclaim that he is Lord. Amen. See, God has power over even Christ's enemies. Amen. See, God is the only one who has power over the enemies. So it, it, it is evident that God has exalted Christ, not man. Now, it is very good for us that Christ is exalted. Th think, about, think about Christ being exalted in, in terms of our salvation. Now, in the Old Testament, Israel would always go to a prophet or they would go to a priest to inquire of the Lord. They would go to someone, someone who was close to God. That, that's, how, that's who you would inquire of the Lord through. And when David wanted to build a house for God, he, he asked Nathan the prophet about it. Now Jesus has been exalted, and he is near the Father. See, it's good that we can inquire of God through this man because he is right near the Father. He, he's been exalted to sit on the right hand of the Father. Job 42, verse 7. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord to, said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not smote, spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So if, if you want to come before God, if you want to ask mercy from God, you better do it through someone that God accepts. Amen. And the Bible says that we were enemies in our minds by wicked works. So obviously God would not accept us. But see, we come to God by the blood of Christ. Amen. For him does God accept. Amen. God accepts Christ. And see, now, now we can have boldness to come to God because we know that God accepts Christ. So by, by God exalting Christ, it's just showing to us that Christ is accepted of God. So if God didn't accept Christ, we would have no boldness for God. Boldness to come before God. But see, it is good for us that Christ is exalted. 
Romans 8.33, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Amen. See, it's good for us that Christ has been exalted to the right hand of the Father. See, how would he make intercession for us if he were still on the earth? How could he do this if he was not right before the Father? See, he couldn't. Hebrews 9.24, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear, where? In the presence of God for us. See, Christ is not interceding for us from an earthly temple. He's gone right up into the presence of God. This is something that we should be very thankful for. Amen. And also since Christ is exalted, see, God is able to raise us up together with him and make us to sit with him in heavenly places. If Christ weren't raised up, God couldn't do that. See, he had to be up there to bring us up to him. Now, since Christ is exalted, he is in the perfect place to give us boldness to come before the throne of grace. Hebrews 4.14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Now under, under the law, the high priests were on earth. And a high priest on the earth can give us no boldness in the heavens. But see... Our, our high priest has passed into the heavens. And, and he's on the right hand of the Father. So when we, when we need to come to the throne of grace, we can look and there he is. Amen. Amen. And, and you say, whom have I in heaven but thee? But we do have him in heaven. Amen. See, he's giving, he's giving us boldness because we see him there and then we can go to him. Now, if we look back at our text in Philippians 2.9, it says, Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him. See, this wherefore is saying there's a reason that he's exalted. So let's go back to verse 5, Philippians 2.5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. See, the reason God has exalted Christ is because Christ made himself of no reputation and Christ took on the form of a servant. Christ humbled himself and he was obedient even unto death. Amen. See, it was expedient according to God's nature that he should exalt this humble one. Amen. Luke, Luke 14, 11, he, he says... For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. See, this, this is what God does. And 1 Peter 5 says, 
Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty of God, hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. See, this is what God does. This is God's work. He exalts the humble. And so when Christ humbled himself, it was right. It was fitting. It was according to God's work that God would exalt him. Amen. So it was, a, it was expedient according to God's nature that he should exalt this humble one. And Jesus humbled himself more than any man ever has. And so God has exalted him higher than any man has ever been exalted. Amen. Isaiah 52, 13 says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. See, God had good reason to exalt Christ, Amen. his servant. See, Christ was his servant and he dealt prudently. And so this was good cause for God to exalt him. In Isaiah 53, 12, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. See, God did not exalt Jesus for no reason. See, Jesus poured out his soul unto death. He made intercession for the transgressors. See, this was the will of God. You know, Hebrews 10, it talks about all these sacrifices didn't do the will of God. But then Jesus said, Lo, I come to do thy will. And Christ did the will of the Father. Christ satisfied the Father. He said, he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. So God was satisfied with Christ. And it was right for God to exalt him. And besides all these things, the exaltation of Christ actually brings glory to God himself. And we already read it, Philippians 2.11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, by, by making every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, God is actually bringing glory to himself. The Revelation 5, verse 6, Christ is worthy to be exalted. Revelation 5, Six, and behold, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing 
and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever.